Hi there, Chris Moylan here again. This video is to show you all the new features of the latest release of the Grand MA2 software, version 3.3. MA Lighting have, as usual, been listening to your feedback, and this version has implemented a huge number of your requests. But before we look at these new features, we have one other exciting new development to show you. MA Lighting has developed a new fixture sharing website, fixtureshare.malighting.com. This new site will contain all the official fixture files from MA and users' versions of fixture files. This site will always have the latest versions of the files available for you to download and install in your console at any time. There's a tutorial on how to use this site on the very first page. So now let's take a look at the new features in Grand MA2. Everyone needs a little help now and again, and the first place you should look is in the console itself. The help system is always there for you as a reference guide to all features on the console. With this software release, it has had a complete overhaul with a fresh new look and lots of new information. Ever got to a show and found one fixture to be hung slightly wrong, or maybe even 90 degrees offset to the rest? Well now you can correct that directly in the patch. A new option in version 3.3 allows you to offset the pan or the tilt on each fixture individually. The values here are the same as the values used in the fixture, so assuming the fixture file is set up correctly, then the offset values will be degrees of movement. If you're working with multiple users and in multiple worlds, it can get confusing and mistakes become commonplace. This feature should help. You can now lock a user profile into a specific world. Simply enter the world into the user profile under the new column. You can also use command line to complete this function. Assign user profile 3 slash world equals 2. When working with XYZ movement on moving lights, it can be easy to make a mistake and store the wrong information. For example, storing pan and tilt values when you meant to store XYZ. A new function under Store Options allows you to lock Store into Pan and Tilt or XYZ to prevent you from making mistakes. Sometimes when working with effects, you make some individual changes for some fixtures. For example, reducing the size of movement of one fixture to prevent it from hitting a piece of scenery. You always had a way of removing this individual data by pressing the Remove Individuals button inside the effect. But now you can also achieve this by command line, using the command remove individuals as one word. You'll remember that we implemented RDM functionality in recent versions. Well, now that goes a little bit further. RDM is now supported over Artnet. Please make sure the fixture you are trying to connect to supports this function. Remember, some fixtures that take Artnet and support RDM over DMX do not support RDM over Artnet. MA nodes will also now support RDM over ArtNet when in ArtNet mode. If you are using GrandMA2 on PC, perhaps in an installation, you might find this next feature useful. You can now define in Windows which show file on PC will load when you start it up. After the command line in Windows to run the on PC software, you just need to add dash "-s", colon, followed by the show file name. Some people commented that the fixture or channel sheet can sometimes be hard to read when looking at values that are active in the programmer, as it is red text on a red background. So there is a new feature to make these screens easier to read. Go into Setup, User, and Settings. At the bottom you will see Programmer Colors. Switch that to High Contrast to see the difference. Using MA nodes, you can now determine on a port-by-port -port basis what will happen to the output if they lose data from the network. There are different timeout options, or just hold last values. Also for nodes and NPUs, there is now a convenient button to reset the IP address to DHCP. Of course, this software version includes a large number of bug fixes, and we are confident that we have made this version the most stable and reliable yet. In particular, Move in Black functionality has been improved. Please see the release notes for a more detailed explanation of this and other fixes. Lastly, we come to our most exciting feature, 
a much easier to use partial show read, also known as PSR. As we have found many people to be unfamiliar with this system, I'm going to give you a brief run through of the whole PSR process. So what is partial show read? It is a system that allows you to copy data from a different show file and merge it into your current show file. You can use it for merging two different shows into one, recovering data from older versions of a show file into the current, or even just making a clean version of your show by starting with a new show and only bringing across the data that you want. Before you start doing anything, we highly recommend that you have backup copies of your show files stored away somewhere else, so if you make a mistake, you can always go back to the beginning. The last thing to mention before we begin is to explain the terms used here. My show refers to the show file currently loaded. This will also be your final show file when the process is finished. Other show refers to the second show file that you will be asked to load during the process and then the show file where you will be taking the data from. Make sure you are in your master show file, the file you'd like to use. We'd strongly suggest you save the file under a new name before starting any PSR procedure. Press backup and then partial show read initialize. You will then be asked to choose a show file to load. This will be the other show file. Once loaded, you will see the partial show read prepare screen. On the left of this screen is the patch from your current show. On the right, you will see the patch from your other show. To make this work, you need to choose which fixtures are going to end up in the final version of your show. Only the fixtures highlighted in green will end up in the final show. Work your way through the list and click on Use Mine or Use Other to pick which fixtures you want to use. If your fixture IDs clash, you can use the Match to ID column to move your fixtures to new ID numbers. To save time, the wizard button at the side can quickly select fixtures for you. You have a choice of Use Mine, which will totally disregard the other patch, Use Other, which will bring in only the new other patch, or Merge Other, which keeps the original patch and adds in any new fixtures from the other show. At the bottom of the screen, you have two more choices to make. The Use My Stage and Use Other Stage buttons will allow you to choose which stage and environment in MA3D your show will use. You cannot merge sets from one file into another. The Use My 3D Positions and Use Other 3D Positions buttons only come into use when you have fixtures with the same ID numbers in both shows. This will determine their positions in 3D. When you have made all your choices, press the Prepare button to complete this process. But be careful. When you do this, it will change your patch in the current show and it will save the show file automatically. As long as you are not in a session, you are now ready to start the actual show read process. Staying in the backup menu, press Partial Show Read. This will show you a screen with the elements of your shows listed on the left side. The recommended method of show reading is to work your way from the top of the list down through each item. If you open Presets and Preset Pools, you will find each of your preset types. Click on the first type to see the data available. On the left is your original show, My Show. On the right is the data from the other show. Your task here is to decide which data you want from the other and where it is going to go in My Show. To assist you at the bottom of the screen, there are buttons that match the objects by number, by name, or automatically. Alternatively, you can highlight any object or group of objects and move them up or down with the arrows, or click on Move At to jump to a specific location. Highlight the objects you want copied and click on Add Selected Items to move the objects across. Now repeat this process for all of your presets, groups, effects, sequences, and so on until you have worked your way through the whole show. During this process, you will see items on the left going gray when all the objects have been copied. Pressing the Cleanup button will get rid of any completed items so they no longer clutter up your list. For a fast read of sequences, you can simply go into Executor Pages and bring whole pages across. This will import sequences and any relevant presets across automatically into the same locations they were in your other show. If there are any conflicts, you will be asked if you want to merge or overwrite the conflicting items. When you have finished, simply close the window and you're done. We hope you find these new features useful. 
If you have any questions or problems, please contact your local MA distributor.